So you remember that time you had uh, something in your teeth uh, at, a, at a lunch or a dinner or something, and it's so humiliating when that happens, the, uh, uh, especially if nobody tells you, your friends and family and whoever you were with. But it, until you get out and find a mirror, maybe hours later, that you can see something about yourself that you couldn't see by yourself, and you could maybe see it through other people if they uh, were intelligent and told you about it, um, but a mirror is, is a way that you can see yourself. And there's uh, something emerging in the internet that um, is essentially a digital mirror, a, a digital twin of, of each of us that is uh, becoming more and more knowledgeable about who we are and uh, knowing more things about us and, uh, and growing at an exponential pace in what it knows. And so in psychology, there's a, a concept called a theory of mind, where uh, I have in my mind uh, something about you, what you look like, who you are, what kind of things you like, what you don't like. And the better I know you, the more accurate my theory of mind about you is, uh, and my ability to predict what, uh, what, how you'll respond to some sort of circumstance. An example of, of something like that in the internet is, uh, for example, our credit report. It's not something we ask for, it's not something we sign up for, it's not something we give our email for, but it's uh, the internet learning about us and our uh, history of paying bills and whatnot, and it's, uh, uh, it's a good predictor uh, of our ability to do those things in the future. And the internet is learning many things in many different ways, and entities like governments and companies are collecting data of, of many kinds about us. And these are collectively going into a description of us, our digital twin, that is increasingly accurate about who we are, how uh, our health is, how our behavior is going to be, what our desires are, what our fears are, um, and, and ways to understand us. And the things that we know about are just the tip of the iceberg of what's actually being collected about us, and uh, including uh, uh, details about our behavior and, and our uh, choices and, and our life. So there's a, uh, an average internet user has 130 or more accounts that they've potentially signed up for with their email and said, I would like to share some of my information uh, uh, for this account. And, and I would say that the amount of information that we're willing to share, uh, our private information is doubling, or we're comfortable sharing about double the amount of information each year as we were the year before. And the number of people being attached to the internet is growing as well exponentially. So not only are each individual person sharing more information about themselves, but more people like me or like you are adding themselves to the internet and the information that is collectively shared is um, better able to predict what kind of pizza you may like because other people much like you like this particular kind. And so the four horsemen of the uh, internet, um, I'll call them uh, Amazon, Apple, Facebook and Google, make their business about developing an accurate model of who we are and what we like and what we don't like and offering us up as something to advertise to or selling us products that uh, they've accurately forecast that we want. And for the most part, this is a good thing that the recommendation of a movie to watch or, a, or food to order or how Uber should take you to the interesting place is uh, um, increasingly accurate and, um, and useful to our lives, so worth sharing for. Other things that are useful is, is so, for example, our search queries can be predictive of our health. Um, Microsoft just uh, showed that um, people's searching for symptoms of their body uh, was able to predict pancreatic cancer uh, before medical diagnosis was able to pick that up. In fact, before people even went to the doctors to see uh, what was wrong with them, they're Googling the symptoms uh, and, and able to uh, understand what uh, uh, patterns, not just in that person, but in the thousands or millions of other people who have searched for those kind of things. Well, what 
kind of medical thing or health thing was going on with them. Another example is, is people's social media posts. As you post more and more things with language that's more stressed or more swear words or more aggressive than is your baseline, you can predict uh, months before a heart attack that you're leading up to some, something like that based purely on the language you use in your social media. And, and so our phones that we keep with us all the time, for the most part, uh, even by our bedside and in our, uh, on our body somewhere, um, are, are, we're volunteering them to collect increasing amounts of information. For example, how fast we're going on the freeway. Are we a, a lawful sort of person? And the microphones uh, are listening now all the time in several different ways to when you're having an argument, do you snore? Uh, what are you arguing about? The artificial intelligence can recognize the words you're saying and the things that are going on in your life and have a more accurate understanding of, of me or you than, than we know ourselves. And this is a world we're volunteering into um, and in many cases we don't really know how much information is being collected about us, but it's certainly expanding exponentially. So the sense of, uh, uh, the modern sense of being self-aware or, or self-empowered um, or enlightened or whatever is starting to change where it's no longer simply our, um, our body and our mind and our spirit and our community. There's also our digital twin. And who are we in the internet? Who, who does the rest of the world think we are digitally? And so to be self-aware in these modern times you need to be self-aware of, of your digital self. And today's renaissance is in the internet, and a renaissance person is no longer somebody who can ride a horse while playing the violin while reciting poetry. That, that was a renaissance person at one time, but now it's how good is your Instagram, or how well do you perform those acts on YouTube more rather than in real life that makes you a, a more renaissance person. And in, important about um, our digital self, it's going to outlive our biological self almost certainly. So taking care of our digital self is as important as taking care of our biological self. So the internet has become a, an artificially intelligent mirror that through machine learning and other techniques learns more and more about us and has the ability to predict what it is that uh, we want what we don't want, and to make our lives better. And so, uh, think about um, the checking the artificial near, mirror next time you're uncertain about something about yourself. <laughs>